Well, we, we anyway, will see. I'm here. I got you. What, what, what team we on? Uh, we are moving on to the Hawaii Warriors here. Um, Ooh, let me go and write my time down. Ugly. Hawaii. Ugly this part. Yeah, this one could get this one could get very interesting. Uh, the Rainbow Warriors. Of course, last year, everybody that paid his attention to college football, if you haven't paid attention in the offseason, well, first off, we understand. I get it, even though there is no offseason. Uh, Todd Graham was fired in, what, February, I think? Yeah. And they ended up hiring Timmy Chang. And for those longtime viewers of this sport, you will remember him because he would fling the ball all around in June Jones' run-and-shoot offense. It, it was a lot of fun. Uh, this team went 6-7 and seven last year, and and then they just had a mass exodus as far as transfers go. Like, everybody left this team. Um, Timmy Chang has well, never been a coordinator. And we, had, and, we like, had, and we had some problems in the program. Um, you know, Todd Graham was obviously a complete and utter disaster. Yes. Um, so, I mean, it's just... A lot of players yeah. said that he uh, he was verbally abusive and all that, and it's it's just old guard kind of stuff that you got to be able to adapt from. And Graham never did, right? Um, right. So then they bring in Timmy Chang, who is uh, the the hero that has always been loved by everybody at Hawaii <laughs> uh, for as long as you can look back. He has not been a coordinator at any level yet, but he is the guy that they have helmed to uh, to maybe try and clean this up. I will I will tell you this. The program is not willing to put in the money right now that you need to I be know. a successful program. Uh, we think this is a stopgap thing, don't we? I do. Uh, do you? I think they're hoping that it can turn into more. I think they're going to give Timmy Chang a lot of leeway. Uh, this They're not just going to fire him after like three years if he doesn't show up. I think... I think this is like four or five year stretch because they're going to get the stadium redone. Like they're already working on that. Uh, they're they're going to do a lot of different things, but they're they're still trying to nickel and dime this, from what I understand. And I don't know how you can be successful in the Mountain West by nickel and diming your way through it, right? Well, what I was saying is, is I think this is all about the stadium. I think they're not even going to try to focus on competitiveness or anything of that nature. Until the stadium's done, yeah. Now I might be wrong on that, but I think it's going to be really hard to recruit and to compete at a real level of any substance at all playing in a practice field for several years. Yes, they are playing in front of about three thousand people. It's not good. I, I, uh. I will. I will take. I will take the under on that. They uh, will not be playing in front of 3,000 people. It holds 3,000. Well, yeah, that's what I'm they saying. Yeah, uh, They ain't going to be playing in front of 3,000. They are number 131 in returning production. Dead last in FBS, uh, 25% of their production is back. Um, and that even includes transfers coming in. Like The transfers that they are bringing in are guys that have not played. So right. this could be very interesting. Um, on top of that, uh, you lost 10 starters on offense. You lost 7 starters on defense. Uh, you lose Chevin Cardero. You lose uh, big play wide receiver Nick Mardner. You lose stud defensive end Jonah Lualu, who went to Oklahoma. You lose linebacker Darius Mwasau. Uh You lost every kind of playmaker that you got. They went 6-7 and seven last year. They were not bad, right? Uh, post-game win expectancy was 6.59 and 6.41, so they were right around where they should have been. Uh, maybe should have been 7-6 and six instead, but regardless, uh, it is what it is. This team... You can throw out every number from last year. Like, right. none of it sure. matters. Uh, their projected SP Plus record is 4-8, and eight, um, which is silly. Now, it, it, sorry, 4-9. and nine. Sorry, because they play 13 games. Um, they bring in... So, let's talk about the offense first. Eastern Washington offensive, uh, offensive coordinator Ian Shoemaker takes over as the OC. And this is his first FBS job. But if you've paid attention to FCS, Eastern Washington's offenses are a lot of fun. Like they they really move the ball around quite a bit. You got to figure out who's going to be your starting quarterback. You got Joey Yellen from Pitt. You got uh, Can Cameron Cooper uh, from Washington State, who was a backup, and then you got sophomore Braden Shaker, who was a backup at Hawaii. So three guys that have been backups um, are all going to be you know vying for this job. And then you're starting from scratch as far as playmakers go. You got running back Dedrick Parson. He's a dual threat playmaker, but. You don't have a lot of talent in the receiving core. 
Um, offensive line at least looks kind of solid. So, you know, maybe maybe that's good, I guess. Uh, as far as the defense, Jacob Yoro is the DC. He was the co-DC in 2020 in Todd Graham's first year. Uh, and he was also a coach with Nick Rolovich. So there's at least a little bit of continuity there, uh, even if there's not with players. Uh, they did bring in seven P5 defensive transfers. Uh, the defense does look decimated other than the transfers that have come in. Uh, again, numbers from last year do not matter. Like it, They were number 61 in defensive PPA per drive, but it, you can't gather that this will be anywhere close to that. Uh, you just got to hope that the chemistry hits with these new guys and that the D.C. Yoro knows what he's doing, who is now on his third Hawaii staff. Uh, give me give me your record here. What, what do you think? I, I think they're 2-10, and 10 and I'm th- I think they're just going to struggle, and I don't know that they'll win two games. I've I've got them three and ten. Um, I've got them beating uh, Nevada at home, but I could easily see them losing that game. The other two, Duquesne and at New Mexico State. Um, I mean, this will tell you we we really don't think highly of New Mexico State. <laughs> no, we're not. Oh no, man. Um, I mean, if if they get something ro- like. There's ways I could see this going well because Hawaii has always done pretty well. But, man, if you just look at the roster and look at the schedule, like, this is this is not a good setup at all. Um, their first three games are Vandy, Western Kentucky, and at Michigan. I, I don't see how they win any of those, uh, even though they've got Vandy and Western Kentucky at home. Like, I just... I, you know, yeah, travel to Hawaii is kind of rough, but eh, I don't know, man. They they brought in 11 P5 transfers. Uh, my keys to the season here, develop chemistry early, hope they pick the right quarterback. Offense is going to need to develop wide receivers early, and they'll luckily have a relatively steady offensive line to lean on. Defense uh, transfer city needs to gel quickly with three relatively tough non-cons to start things off. Like, I've got them three and ten. Um, you, you've only got them winning two ball games. Two ball games. Two and eleven. Whew. That is rough. That's a that's a rough season when you got uh thirteen games to play instead of <laughs> instead of the normal twelve. Like that extra game is just ugh. uh they closed the season at San Jose State, by the way. <laughs> so <laughs> just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.